So if you're getting into macros in Excel, you might want to have messages displayed on the screen. These can be prompts telling you that a macro is complete or that it's about to start or various stages along the way. Or perhaps you want a response such as yes or no as to whether you want to save a file or not. And we're going to do this. I'm going to just show you how to create these message boxes and then I'm going to show you how you can put them into some existing code, which is a macro that I recorded previously and it's actually online and there is actually if you're looking at this on YouTube there is a link to it in the description underneath this video or you can actually go to my website www.jargonfreehelp.com go to the Excel section and you'll find it there as well. So we're just going to pop a button in so I'm just going to put in this command button click on insert here so you can see I'm in the developer tab just click and I'm just going to click there and just pop this button here and I'm just going to double click on it which takes me into where I can write the code. So that button is just going to allow us to click on it and the message box will then pop up. So a message box is done in two different ways. So the first kind is just to display a simple message. So if we just want to say something like hello world I can just do message box and I'm doing it in lowercase. When I press space it's given me my context sensitive help. The three things here are that we're interested in really is the prompt, the style of the message box and the title. The help file and the context that's what's used to create a help system using this Visual Basic for applications and we're not going to get into that now. So these are really the ones we want. So you know when you see help somewhere um, this is all linked up using this system. So um, which is this bit at the end. So the prompt, if I just want something simple, just put it in quotes, hello world, and then just finish it like that. Press enter. So you'll see that it's actually done it now. It's made a capital M and capital B. One of the reasons I do it all in lowercase is that way if I've done it correctly, it automatically capitalizes the right letters there. If there's a typo in my commands, then it doesn't do it. So let's just see what that does. So I'm just going to go back. I'm just clicking down the bottom. I'm going back to Excel here. Um, I'm just going to turn off design mode and I'm just going to click on this button. And you'll see it's popped up with this message box, Hello World. And you can just click on it, OK, to get rid of it. However, there's a lot more that you can do. I'm just going to go back into my design mode there. Whilst I am here, I am just going to change it to from this command button, hit one here. I'm just going to right click on it, go to properties in my caption here. I'm just going to do it as click here. And I'm just going to close that. Okay, so double click on this again, takes me into here. Now, one of the beauties of this is as, uh, as I type, so you can see it prompted me to put in a prompt. If I press a comma for the style, the different things I can do here is what type of buttons I want and also what I want to display. So I might want an exclamation mark or something critical. So there we are, VB exclamation or information. I'm just going to click on information here, press enter on that. I'm not going to add in anything else just yet. We're just going to go back to my book here and turn off design mode again. Click here and this time You'll see it's now got this little I here, which is indicating that it's a bit of information. So there are different options there. So let's go back to the design mode. I'm just going to double click again. And the other thing I can do is I can put in a title at the top. So that's what appears in the bar. So if I put this one in here as test message, we can now start to see the whole thing come together. So back to my workbook. I'm just clicking down the bottom here just to change back. Turn off design mode, click there and you can now see there's the title, there's the prompt and there is that little information icon as well. So let's just click on OK on that. So there's more that we can do. So for example I'm just going to double click here so that's one message box. So the other type of message box that you might want is one that actually gives you a response. So I'm just going to put in message box here. No particular reason that I left uh, an extra line in there. 
I'm just uh, popping that in. So for this one, I'm actually expecting a response. Now for this one, I need to put the brackets in here. And again, I'm just going to put in quotes here and I'm just going to put in a little prompt, which is um, click on yes or no. Press the comma and my little context sensitive help pops up and I am going to look for one down here that says VB yes no. You can see you've got OK and cancel together, OK only, question retry or cancel, system modal yes no, yes no or cancel. Let's do that. So I'm just going to double click on it, comma, put in my title. You don't have to put in a title as I showed you before, you didn't need one in there. So I'm just going to call it message quotes and then close. Now that is going to return a bit of information. It's either going to return something that says VB yes or VB no. So it can then make a decision, but we need to save that somewhere. So I'm just going to put it into a variable called response and I've got some coming up about variables and really if you know anything about this you should dimension it which is you tell it whether or not it's a number or text text being a string so it is actually a number but if you're not sure you can just go dim response and it will automatically choose the right one or at least it should so let's go back now to my book too. We're going to get two message box popped up, up here. One is the first one that we did. Sorry, they just sort of go slightly off the screen there, but I'm just moving them back into position. Nothing changes otherwise. If I click OK, it moves on to the next one. And now this time you see it's got a yes or no. So depending on which one I click, it can do something like do I want it to save or not. So I'm just going to say yes to that and it would then do it. So we can take a little bit of a closer look at that one. So I'm just going to go back into the design mode and double click. So something you may not have touched on yet and the tutorial is coming, it may already be there depending on when you watch this, is to use an if statement. So based on the response I'm going to go if response equals VB yes then I'm going to have a message box. I just tab there I'm simply going to have a message saying you clicked on yes. Else, if I didn't click on the yes, then I'm going to get a message box that says you clicked on no. And just backspace so that it's not indented. And if tells it to stop that if. Go and have a look at that tutorial if it's there. If not, I promise you it's coming soon. So there's that one. I'm now just going to go back to our book here, go out of design mode, click here. There's the first one, hello world, and click on OK. And we're going to click on yes. And again, it's just clicked on OK here. So it says you clicked on yes, which is exactly what I did. In fact, I'm just going to move this down a bit. Let's just quickly do that again so you can actually see them pop up. There you go. Hello world. Click yes or no. Click no. You clicked on no. Let's just do that one more time. Hello world, which I could now get rid of actually. Click on yes and it says you clicked on yes. So just switching back to that, you've now got how to do a message box, how to get a response, and also you now know a little bit about an if statement here. So the first bit is if that is true, it displays this. If it's not true, then it's that one there. So that is how you can use the message boxes. But just one thing about this is we've got the yes or no, but I also want to include the information come up on there as well. So I'm just going to do something here at the end of this. I'm just going to press plus. And I can now choose that VB exclamation. Here, let's put that one in rather than the information which we did last time. So that's now telling it to be VB yes and no button and also display the icon. So they both go into this parameter here and you just use the plus to add both of them in. We can quickly check that by going to here, 
go into the design mode, click here, yes or no. And if I have that one there, it's got the exclamation in here now as well, as well as the yes or no, that didn't have that before. Okay, so that's how you can combine it all together. Quick look at a bit of code that I had before. So I'm just gonna open up one I had before. If I just go into here, it's in my most recent, and it's this one here, Macros 1. I'm just gonna open this. I have a bit of code in here. To get to it, I'm gonna go into my Macros, and just, it's this one here, Import Films. So when it finishes, I want it to come up with a message box saying that the macro is actually complete. So I'm just gonna click on Edit, and here it is, it's right here, this code. And I'm just gonna move everything up just a little bit so you can see it. So this is the actual code. You can see here is my import films. That's where it starts. It starts with sub for subroutine. Going to more of this in another tutorial. Here is the code. This is what I recorded. Down at the bottom here, I'm just gonna click here and put in just a really simple message box. And as you can, a bit of a typo there. Let's do that. And let's put in data imported and saved. Okay, let's just have a little information come up here. So let's choose that one, a little symbol for it just tidies it up. And why not put a title? I could have just had this first bit at the beginning here. I didn't really need anything else, but it just keeps everything tidy. So let's just have a little message at the top here that says complete. Okay, so if I just click or press return, you can see it's got message box. It's now capitalized that M and the B, so no, no typos there in that. So let's just go back to Excel just here. And what I'm gonna do is actually run this macro now. I'm just gonna go into macros here it is this import films it's got this bit extra here because i'm actually starting on a separate sheet but it's already running but sorry not a sheet an extra a different workbook so let's hit run comes up with the message box here saying that it's renaming the file because part of the recording was to actually save it so it's just overwriting one that already exists i'm going to replace it i'm going to say yes and there it is there's my message that i just created to say that I've saved it. So once again, you can have message boxes that just give you indications of things, so just messages on the screen, and other ones, again, they're messages, but you can choose what you want to do, such as having okay, cancel, yes, no. So I could have actually had one here saying, did I want to save it? Did I want to give it a different name? And by choosing yes or no, I could have actually then had an input box, which I will do very soon, to actually give it a different name. So that's message boxes in Excel VBA, and this works on all versions, although I've done this in Excel 2010. If you're gonna get into your macros on 2003 and prior to that, or on a Mac, you need to go into tools and choose macros there. So stick around for more.